Hey guys, Richard in Ryden's room here doing my latest Doctor Who review. Again, this is just following on from the last two, which immediately. Just do it before I lose my breath completely, but I'm off work tomorrow, so plenty of time. So, random thing for the day, obviously, Warhammer. Oh, and. Would anyone think I'm 37? I'm doing a great job of looking at it. Yeah, there's a little bit of grey in there, which. To be honest, isn't that visible? I put, I put some of that empty grey stuff on years ago, and it's keen to like semi permanently hide it good for good. It all, it's gradually come back, but. So trust me, like pictures of me three years ago is a lot more grey then. It's now it's not just lighting, it's legit. Yeah, there is like it's hard to tell, but there is some there. And um yeah. You know, would you actually think I uh, you know, maybe 37 I've got to get, go for the uh, boy band hair as long as I can. <laughs> this hair probably won't be here forever, but hell I'm not like spending the same amounts to keep it. But while it's here and while I'm uh, still young, you know, everyone thinks I'm younger than I look, which is uh, younger than I am, which is great. Uh keep myself looking youthful as possible. <laughs> Okay, um, yeah, I should really bleach it and then shave the beard off completely and go for a proper boy bandy look. Why not? <laughs> so, which now I know all the songs. Okay, so, episode one of, seri of new series four, Partners in Crime. So, Donna's back. Donna, who was just going to be a one-off as a Christmas episode, seems they like Chris, uh, Catherine Tate so much to bring her back. Might have heard she was never planned to be um, a permanent character, you know, let, not even series three, let alone returning for another series, but... Good on them. You know, she introduces a hell of a different dy dynamic to the show. So let's get to it. So the plot. Doctor is on his own. Um, he's like, this is like, obviously it's not a year in terms of for him 365 days, but it is a, oh, it might be based on the age he gives himself over each series. But either way, it's a year after series three of its god awful. Let's rewind time so that four days became no days. But yeah, this is one year later. Um, Donna is like miserable. She did the whole exploring the world stuff and wasn't happy and realized the doctor was the only time she was truly like truly happy and go to trying to find him uh, by basically putting herself into situations that he will probably end up in as well. And that's pretty much what happens. She's uh, you know investigating this new company. Uh, so is the doctor. They've um, basically a company that sells these pills and make people lose weight. The fat literally walks away. And uh, of course, there's got to be something going on. You see, not just the cost. No doubt this costs a lot of money. It's just, can't be, you know, just like that, take these pills and you lose weight with, like, no side effects or anything. Something bad must be going on, but who knows. So, yeah, that's basically the plot. And Dr. Nona eventually meets up, stop the villain, who is uh, basically creating babies, like a new like, species, like, through fat, walking flat. Sorry, these were meant to be action figures, and it never happened. Um, to be given to, like, some like, a other alien planets. And uh, then the doc Donna asks to go with the Doctor. He says yes, and she goes with him at the end. Yeah, that's basically it. Now let's talk about what, you know the actual good stuff of the episode. So this, this is, I want to say it's as funny as they think it was. And that's kind of a thing with series four. They put a lot of jokes in. They're, they're absolutely hysterical together. Catherine has got a leading, um, amazing comedic skills. And her and Dave tend to play off each other so well. Not everything is as like hilarious as they think it is. But most of the time it is. And um, yeah, it's a great moments like in the beginning where like the Doctor and Dodo keep like, they're in the same like, phone centre like to where the call's being made to sell those um adipose pills to fat, uh, for fat loss to people and they keep looking up and like missing each other at the exact moment like it's all played for the laughs and then you get the sad stuff when the doctor's like in the TARDIS notices something excitedly like cool you know shouts out what he just noticed then he realises there's no one there and you see uh, Donna's life is miserable she's living with her mum and her granddad again her, oh her granddad was the uh, guy from uh, the stalled in London in the Titanic episode um he's not at the time he was just a guy someone just who wouldn't leave London even though everyone evacuated because of all the disasters that happened over Christmas time didn't mention in my last video my, my bad um but yeah it's like fun he's there oh and he why is he not at the wedding and where's Donna's dad so Donna's the actor who played Donna's dad died um real shame you know he's a likable character he seems absolutely fine in the Christmas episode but yeah the actor got ill and passed away and out of respect to him they basically took the guy Bernard Cribbins amazing actor who's actually been in Doctor Who in the past um, and an, an amazing uh, moment in Forty Towers which I was watching recently no it is him where a guy who basically kicks Basil's ass which is great <laughs> um, but yeah his, his random character got turned into Donna's grandfather and he effectively got given Donna's dad's parts like Donna's dad would have been the one who's like all accepting of her like life of the Doctor but yeah with him gone they didn't want to just recast him and they just Effectively took a new character and made him part of it. And oh, and he was officially ill, had Spanish flu or something. That's what it wasn't at the wedding. Um, but yeah, they basically fill the void with Donna's dad being gone by giving her a granddad and making him the, you know, a key character. So great, great job there. And 
watching this in 07, uh, 08, well, technically 07 was after the Christmas one, I had no idea how, like, much people love Bernard Cribbins, but my God, he's good, and he just, every episode he's in is amazing. But yeah, in Faulty Towers, he's a guest who has the, gets treated like complete garbage by Basil, and actually gives a good beating for it, which was great. He actually appeared in the Peter Cushing Doctor Who episodes, you know, where Doctor Who was Doctor Who, and he actually appeared as a uh, companion in the second one. And yeah, you say he's here. There's some guy in the Lon in London in the Titanic episode, and now he's Donna's uh, granddad, Wilfred, which is pretty awesome. So um, yeah, you see that Donna's living with her mum, her granddad as well, and she's just really miserable. Well, her granddad is uh, stargazing off on this little hill, and so he's like kind of happy, but yeah, Donna's miserable. She talks about how she's like let this amazing man go. It's nothing romantic, and she just really regrets it. And he's like, ah, oh, you never give up anything, Donna. You'll find him, and she does. There's like a hilarious scene when they're both like outside this building listening in on the woman who's in charge of adipose and they just both see each other they just like just the sound effects and like the looks on their face it's like Donna's like and the, doctor, and the doctor's like, like and it's like a silent conversation and you like just, just miming it so perfectly and it goes great and it's just like got to the other he's like like it's like and then they like cuts to the woman like showing them. Are we interrupting you? <laughs> there's, there's some hilarious stuff in there. It is a really good and um yeah, the plot is the villain. She's basically selling all these like weight loss pills to people, makes them lose weight, and the fat literally comes off at 1 a.m. Normally you escape through your cat flap or an open window, and they're basically a form of like babies being given to another planet. So I'm like and which are like basically need children, it seems. Um and yeah, some just great moments. You know, they're not those threatening villains at all. But uh, when things inevitably go wrong, the uh, woman's in charge will basically kill every single person, like melt them to nothing to create more children. Yeah, it's a uh, idea of collateral damage is really twisted. So they have to, of course, stop them from doing that. And uh, <clears throat> yeah, at the end, they she gets beaten because the doctor realizes what's going to happen. The uh, alien race have got the children. They've got no need for her. She's basically the evidence of... Yeah, her, them basically her operating, you know, performing illegally on an alien planet, which is like banned, you know, Shadow Proclamation, get referenced again. And they basically murder her, you know, lift her up, everyone gets left, all the adipose get levitated up with a tractor beam. They just drop her as so she falls to her death. But again, it feels like the comedy is like a moment when like, the beam just stops, she looks around, then it's and screams. So it's like, yeah, they're definitely trying to make her more comedic than like truly horrible. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, and uh, let's get to the main point. So, <laughs> I've said this did, clearly did listen. So, Rose not to go down that. Are they some sort of couple route? Which a lot of people liked. Fan, I've always said, if you like that, fair enough. But I'm not the only one who didn't like it. And unfortunately, the worst part was they changed Rose into like this really possessive, like horrible person in series two. You know, who'd actually abandon her mum and dad who have finally got back together just to be the Doctor Forever because she seems to think he's like, she's all that matters to him. Like, no one else can compete. So you get Rose and the Doctor in this terrible relationship, so you like that. Then you get Martha, who's proved how good she is, but has to be like obsessed with the Doctor, like constantly like miserable that he's mentioning about Rose. Again, what a dick, he shouldn't keep doing that. But yeah, like Rose, Martha's defined by not how intelligent she was or how you know resourceful you know, the things she did were absolutely amazing. No, it's that she was basically never going to have her feelings reciprocated by the Doctor. Donna, it's none of those things. Yeah, it's more things. The fact that Donna's, I mean, Martha and Rose are, well, Rose was 19 at the start, and the actress wasn't. Martha's clearly in her mid-20s. Um, Donna's probably meant to be the same age that Catherine Tate is, so mid-30s, like, much like David Tennant. And uh, basically, she's a grown-up. She isn't desperate for a boyfriend like Rose and Martha seem to be. She's, you know, she just wants the adventure. She wants to, like, get some fulfillment, enjoy her life. And let's just say the Doctor's not a type. I think even if he wasn't an alien, she wouldn't be interested. There's a lot of jokes about his, uh, like like myself, his uh, lack of strength. You know, constantly joking about how he's like so thin and like you know, you know, in the Christmas said, oh, that this coat wouldn't fit a rat. And then in a later episode, when you hug him, you get a paper cut. Um, but yeah, you, you, but that's ultimately it. The Doctor's not human, and Donna's got no interest in uh, extraterrestrial relations. <laughs> Oh, Allah, that Simpsons the Halloween episode with Marge and Kang. No, Donna doesn't want anything like that. But I swear, even if Doctor was human, it looks wise. Yeah, I get, you get the impression Donna likes so bigger men, <laughs> men a bit more well built. Think you know, that uh, Tom guy in there. You know that um, 
yeah, Tom, the one that Tom Ellis played in uh, the series three finale with Martha. But yeah, either way, this has knocked me out of the romance one bit. The Doctor finally, as he says from the start, he just, what happened with Martha should not have happened. He doesn't want that to happen again. Donna makes it very clear that no chance of anything like that happening. And yes, thank God. You know, Russell has admitted he you know, made a decision there to be no romance, and it's so much better for it. I was saying to my friend a few months ago watching it, like, they shouldn't be romance because the Doctor's ultimately got this duty of care to the people with him. He shouldn't be developing relationships. I mean, the Doctor can get relationships, sure, as long as it's done well, it's with something really special where it can work, e.g. Romana in the old ones. Yeah, <laughs> Romana and the uh, fourth, fourth Doctor must have been a couple at some point. Surely it would happen, but... Yeah, that's the whole point there about like, Time Lord, Time Lady, the way their lives work, their ageing, etc. It works, it can't for human, and yeah, no, none of that, you know, no mating, this series, Sunshine, it's not happening, and yeah, it's so much better for it. It's so, no, it's not, this is a spoiler, but they're not gonna like flip that around, the Doctor and Donna are not gonna become a couple in five episodes' time or anything like that, no, they're, you know, and there's a lot of great ref- you know, jokes about that. Oh, you, you know, you might come away, come, you know, Let's come away this way, missus. Like, oh no, I'm not, you know, or like, you're, you know, uh, you got to obey or we'll punish, you know, your woman's like, oh, no, no, we're definitely not a couple. <laughs> um, so yeah, but thank God that's the first thing that it just works well. And of course, it helps that Catherine Tate David Tennant are similar ages, so they just work so well. I mean, they'd have worked as a couple of way based on that the actors are the same age, but just they just feel like a good team, you know, a duo like it used to be. And yeah, so that's the episode, it ends with them leaving on a you know, goes. You know, it's the first place she wants goes where Wilfred is. Where Wilfred's watching on the uh, cheap as he tells him. You ever see a blue box? Let me know. And yeah, you just see the TARDIS floating for the sky with the door open while they're both waving to him. And Wilfred's like, "Yeah, go get him, girl." It's great that like when you look at um, you know Jackie, you're like appalled when she found out what uh, Rose was up to, the danger Rose put herself in, or Martha's mum had no idea what was going on. Um, it's great that Donna's got that person who does know. Yeah, she doesn't tell her mum, but she tells her granddad, and he's all for it. Yeah, yeah, go, stay, yo, yeah, have fun. Which is yeah, again, it's just everything wrong about series three. And three, there's not a lot wrong with series three. It's just more the relationshipy stuff. None of it is in here. They know not to do it, and it's and even again, the ad, you know, Donna is a grown up. It shows, and yeah, same for her, like family, yo, yeah, granddad knowing what's going on and being supportive. It's a great, great idea. And, yeah, so it's always, always been my favourite, and well, it's the one I've had to rebuy because I burned the disc out so much. Not even series three got that treatment, but thankfully these discs work fine. So yeah, just that's it then. This is quite a long video, but uh, you know me, I was ramble on and got plenty to say. So yeah, that's it. So I'll have the next ones up. Next one is one of my favourite episodes ever, The Fires of Pompeii, the second episode. It's a genuine masterpiece, and same for episode three to as well, although two is better. But yeah, so that's it. So, um, oh. I should probably mention this before I forget. Yes, I don't feel this overshadowed, overshadowed things too much, but I can see think that Rose is back. Basically, at the end of the episode, Donna's basically got all her suitcase, a suitcase, some luggage inside a car, ready for she found the doctor. She'd have a thing with her, and she basically leaves her keys in the bin for her mum to find, and uh, asks some random woman, you know, when she sees someone coming for the keys, tell her it's in this bin, she'll know what it means, and the woman turns around, and it's Rose. You know, Rose just standing there, the sort of somewhat sad look in her face, and walks away and then just disappears. Like, huh. So, yeah, I didn't know Rose was coming back in series four. I, know, I had a feeling RTD would do it eventually, but at this point, he was still going to do lots more. But, um, there was still going to be much more, but no, um, of him. You know, he's, I'm sure he, there was no limit on his contract. And uh, But yeah, and Rose appeared. I, I don't think it overshadowed things too much at all, fortunately. But uh, yeah, it certainly made me feel, I think, pretty much like everyone else, I was like, <gasps> I'm sure everyone was like, Rose is back. <laughs> but, um, yeah, obviously it was Rose, not just something it looks like her, uh, but, uh, yeah, it didn't really harm the episode too much, but, uh, yeah, and it's not exactly a constant thing. Rose, Mar- Rose doesn't, like, appear every episode or anything like that, but just that once. But, yeah, it's certainly intriguing, wondering what's going on there. But, yeah, that's it. So I will try and see you next time. I'll get these vids uploaded now, and hopefully try and get up to date with my episodes. But,